But essentially, you know, I was in the insurance industry for seven years. So um, I was selling Aflac, you know, the duck. Yeah. And every single morning before I would go out and knock on doors and sell insurance, I would make a smoothie. So I make like an almond milk smoothie or like a rice milk smoothie back when rice milk was popular. Sure. And I just love the concept of having a freshly blended smoothie that gave me a lot of energy and kept me going. And I'd be in the field literally all day. Were you door to door? Or was I wasn't, it? Uh, not for homes. That okay. would be, I wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. Like a Kirby vacuum salesperson or something. <laughs> yeah. But I went like to like business to business. Okay. So there were, it was door to door, but each door was separated by about a quarter mile, you know? Okay. And so I didn't like going, you know, these are like all these industrial parks, business plazas. What's in industrial areas? You know, there's fast food restaurants, you know, there's not great food out there in most places, even in LA, it's still kind of spotty. So I've decided I'm just going to bring my own smoothies like a little blender bottle and um, with protein in it, with banana in it, kale in it and some uh, you know, almond milk. And it kept me going for several hours. And I'm like, you know what? Like the human body does not have to have like a huge breakfast. We don't have to have like bacon and eggs and all the things that were all the norms we talked about yeah. that we think that we need in the morning. So I'm like, smoothies are great. And it kind of just stuck in my mind in my seven year career. And then in 2012, I left Aflac. I did a little nonprofit stint, left Aflac and I'm like, okay, you know, what's next? So I'm like, you know what? I fell in love with this concept of smoothies, but I wasn't quite sure exactly what I was going to do. You know, there was still wasn't that like, you know, the aha moment, like, what am I going to create? So I met a friend through work and before I left, and then they invited me over for dinner and they're vegans. So a wow. surprise, surprise in yeah. LA. And at that time I, I was, a, I think a vegetarian. So we had dinner, great dinner. And then for dessert, one of them asked me like, oh, have you ever had a whole coconut smoothie? And I'm like, what the, what the hell is a coconut smoothie? I've had coconut water, but I hate coconut water. <laughs> like I'm, I'm pretty much, if someone like as a kid, if someone offered me C's candies, you know, in the box, yes, I would not have the coconut, the coconut one, one yeah. with the coconut shape. I'm the same way, by the way. Yeah. So you're like anti-coconut. The texture of it. Yeah. Like just, crunchiness. Yeah. I'm just not, I'm just like, why did we ruin a chocolate bar? with this. Right. I right there with you, brother. I just never like coconut, never liked the texture. Yeah. I, I think partly it's because most of the coconut products are highly processed. They seem that way. And they just don't really yeah. taste like authentic coconut. Mm -hmm. So when in that kitchen in 2013 now, when they shucked a coconut, scooped the meat out in the water and blended it from a fresh young coconut from the market, from the LA produce market, I was just like, oh my God, this is a genius. Like this concept of whole coconut blended, this is what I've been looking for. Like this taste, the creamy texture, which, yeah. you know, you can mm -hmm. kind of taste the knees. Yeah. Like, we're drinking it now for people who are watching it uh, and listening but where you have all the products on the table. And so you were like, this is it. And there's other people clearly who like this too. Exactly. Like coconut water in 2013 was like still right. escalating, yeah. like right. for the hydration value, for like a, a healthy replacement as a sports drink. Sure but no one ever used the entire coconut. Like no one used the coconut meat. And to me, that's where the magic is. Like coconut water is great, but the coconut meat has the MCTs, the good fats, the protein, the fiber. And I like the taste of coconut meat over just coconut water. So blending the two together and without adding any sugar, or any junk, I'm like, this is amazingly simplistic in and of itself. And it's nutritious and it tastes great. So I want to come out with this and I'm going to call it at the time I decided to call genius juice, which is still the name of the company, but on the label, it says genius, right? With a little like, you know, genius guy on the front that looks like someone we may know. And, <laughs> and so, uh, from there, that was 2013. It, it can get a, a, a very confusing story, but be right before I started genius juice, I had a stint in a natural food company to learn the business. So I was like bringing product and the lessons. Very intentional. Very intentional. Okay. Like I may have stayed there if the opportunity was good enough, but I decided like, do I want to build someone else's dream or my own dream? How long were you there? For four months. Okay. Yeah. And I just, I was getting An not internship. paid a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then I was quickly learning mm -hmm. and I was like becoming the director of like all their marketing and sales and like boosting sales online. And I'm like, if I'm doing all this work, 
and like working 15 hours a day and driving into their office, I might as well just form my own company. So that was like kind of around that time. I'm going out of order. That was before I approached my friends about Genius Juice and found, and, and this idea dawned on me. So in early- was it, was it that linear for you? Or did you spend a lot of like time mentally thinking about the jump? Or were you convinced like after all the time at Aflac and even like, was it easy? Cause I know some people like for me, this moment, super linear is like, obviously I'm going to quit. Right. But I think a lot of entrepreneurs spend a lot of time in the what if stage and they spend so much time realizing things like the fears will never come true. But for you, it, it sounds like it was pretty straightforward. Yeah. It was, you know, a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck. They call like paralysis by analysis. Yeah. I was just, you know, I was in a fortunate place where I had some, you know, a little bit of a nest egg from seven years at Aflac. I had residual income coming in. I had savings, which a lot of it, you know, went into genius. However, it wasn't about the financial situation. It was really about just being hungry for it. And I, I treat it like a game. You know what I mean? Like it's hard to explain, but it's like, this is fun. And I want to get started sooner because the sooner I can start, the sooner that I can build this up and make this successful. So that was my ethos, you know, in creating genius. And also like, I really didn't want anyone else to, to pawn or poach the idea. All these brands that are out from the Zico's, you know, Vita Coco, Harmless Harvest, ONE, all these different coconut water brands. I'm sure they've thought about it and they just haven't executed on it. And if they found out that I was doing it, if I move slow, they can then take the idea and move a lot faster. So by being very aggressive and getting into a lot of like retailers nationally, we got a really great head start on this product 